Yeah. All three players uh, coming out of the East. Patrice Bergeron, I mean, to the shock of absolutely nobody, as he is a five-time winner, most selfies in NHL history. Nico Heischer of the Devils, 53% winning percentage in the faceoff dot, plus 33. Plays a lot. Mitch Marner of the Toronto Maple Leafs, 104 takeaways, 45 blocks. A huge PK specialist yep. uh, for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I have to imagine that had something to do with his votes as well. But those are your three, all out of the East. We'll get to a little controversy uh, yeah. in a minute. But first, <laughs> right. just your thoughts on the three that end up as finalists. Well, all great candidates. I mean, Patrice Bergeron has won like 107 Selkies now, I think. <laughs> he just seems to be in the mix. Rename the, the trophy. He's actually like in they the did. process of changing his last name to Selkie. The Selkie, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Or they'll change the trophy. Yeah. Well, that's a better idea. To the Bergeron trophy. Yeah, you can see the last bunch of winners here. And, uh, you know, you forget that Sean Couturier won that award. I mean, sadly, Sean's been injured and missed a lot of time. So hopefully he's going to be healthy and playing again next year for the Flyers. But Bergeron has won it five times. You know, I remember when this award came into play. It was the, one of the reasons they brought this into existence in the late 70s, early 80s, was as they were looking to find a way to honor Bob Gainey, who was like a great two-way player. The, the, the famous Russian coaches, when they came over, they said Bob Gainey was like the perfect player. And so they, they created this defensive forward award, and guys like Guy Carboneau won it over the years, Jerry Lettinen. But over time, it's morphed into an award where offense does play a part in it. You have to have offensive numbers as well. And so you see some of the guys that have won it more recently. Uh, all three guys are terrific. I think you can make a case for several other players around the league. But, uh, you know, those three guys, you can't argue. They're all really good 200-foot players. To me, Bergeron wins it again. Nico Heischer, nice to see him in the mix. Mitch Marner, his evolution. And that's what's really changed. And, Jackie, why the Leafs, if they have hopes this postseason, is that Matthews and Marner, their two-way games – have evolved so much Big over time. the last two or three years, especially Marner. You talked about him on being playing on the power play, playing on the penalty kill, and he was just so consistent throughout the course of this season. That's why Bergeron always wins this trophy is because Bergeron is one of the most consistent players in the NHL throughout every single game throughout the 82. Well, that was Mitch Marner this year. He had that long point streak. It ended, had another one. So it seemed like maybe once or twice that he went a couple of games without a point. And he was doing this while playing at the other end of the rink, playing sound defensive hockey. And it's really a good lesson for young kids out there. If you play good in your own end, you're going to get chances offensively. That's right, yeah. The cookies, a lot of these guys... The cookies become, will come. Yes, and uh, you ask every one of these guys' teammates... They love playing, playing with, with these them. guys because yeah. they get the puck back and go the yeah. other way. I'll tell you what, Nico Heischer for me of those three would be the guy I'd vote for because the Devils, they have a lot of go, go, go in their game. And Nico Heischer is the one guy for sure, 200 foot by 85. He's everywhere, plays against. He gets all the tough matchups. I mean, Mitch Marder deserves a lot of credit as well, obviously Bergeron. But if I was voting, I might vote for Nico Heischer because of his fit within that group. Well, let's all, hear it. Let's hear this. Come on. Come on. I'm waiting for it. Listen, let me just preface this by saying uh, all three finalists more than deserving yeah, to be finalists absolutely. for the award. But I love a little controversy, a little drama, yeah, if yeah. you will. So when I saw Jarrett Stoll enter the conversation, yeah. I got a little excited. He had yeah. this to say. I usually yeah. don't do this, Yeah. but here I go. Come on. No disrespect to this year's Selkie Trophy finalist, but how is Andre Kopitar not nominated? Such a joke. Writers should stay up a little later to watch the great players out west. Now, I loved the Kings this year, and Andre, Andre Kopitar was a big reason why the guy's 35 years old. He had 70-something points on the season. He plays an amazing two-way game. We talk all the time about him and Dano being this amazing one-two punch down the middle, not because of the points that they score, but because of the way they are able to shut down the opposition to the tune of, like, Connor McDavid at certain yeah. points in that series. So uh, I understand Jarrett Stoll's frustration because I do think that if you, if you look at the numbers, which I have not – 
fully done, mm -hmm. um, I, I think you would be surprised to see just how um, effective Anje Kopitar still is at the age of 35. Yeah, I would have had no problem at all if he was uh, if he was nominated. I mean, I, I never like when I get tweaked about staying up late. You know how that is, because I am. You do. You I stay up. Stay no, up I don't late. vote anymore, so I'm maybe maybe that hurts those guys out there. <laughs> but uh, and I haven't voted in a good while, and it's not really something that I I need to do anytime soon. But. Um, I feel like, uh, you know, that maybe there is something to that. I hate to hear it because I think, you know, when you're, when you're voting in these kind of things, you darn well better stay up and watch games and know what's going on around the National Hockey League to be a fair assessment. I think this is the hardest one to really vote on when you really think about. You have to see guy, I think, night after night. You could really appreciate the things that Barkoff does for the Florida Panthers, especially like this year has been a tricky year. He's been injured, but he's been a winner of that award in the past. You understand because you watch all their games. Jared Stahl watches L.A. every night. He understands the kind of season and the kind of importance that Kopitar has on every single square inch of that ice. And so, absolutely, he could be a finalist. And maybe it is a joke he isn't nominated. I got. I pulled up some numbers. What do you got? Now, right. now it's important to, to pull up all, all numbers that you yeah. take into consideration. But here are, here are just a few, all right? All right. Uh, puck battle wins this year uh, for forwards that have played at least 1,000 a, a minutes, all situations. Third. Third in puck Pretty battle good. wins. Defensive zone puck battle wins. Numero uno. Well, they're right nobody, there. Nobody right there. won it. more per game. Uh, defensive zone, loose puck recoveries. He was top 10. Defensive zone, stick checks. Billy, uh, 16th in the league. Block defensive zone passes, 14th. Uh, defensive zone faceoff wins. He was 12th. Yeah. So, certainly one of the best. Uh, to and a former winner in the game. of and the award. So, winner, a pedigree so. in that area. Yeah. You know these guys. And, you know, what? one guy that's in the playoffs doesn't quite put up the offensive numbers, but watch. That line of Faust, Martinuk, and that centerman, mm -hmm. Jordan Stahl. Yeah. Third line in Carolina. in Carolina. Ask Roddy B how much he loved yes. them. What did oh, we yeah. talk he about? He didn't want to break them up, He right? did not want to break them up. And then, obviously, when they had injuries, yeah. he, you know, the issue was forced. They, the, the job they do defensively are, whew. Yeah. <laughs> On that note, yeah. whew.